Good, good evening, Winthrop, uh, and welcome to the Winthrop Town Council meeting of April 6, 2021. Meeting is being called to order, I believe it's 7.03. This is a remote meeting uh, with each person being at their own uh, computer and joining by Zoom. Uh, this meeting will be shown live on WCAT, channel 22, and will be shown again uh, numerous times during the week. The call-in number for tonight's meeting, for anyone that is watching would like to call in and join, is 1-301-715-8592, with an ID number of 844-586. 59641 uh, pound sign. Okay, so uh, please join us for public uh, comment and public hearings. Uh, could we please have a roll call? Councilor Ruggiero. Yeah. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I made it. Yay. <laughs> Councilor Ruggiero. Here. Councilor Flockhart. Here. Council DeMarco. Here. Council Latieri. Council Honan. Here. Council Laconte. Present. Council Frino. Here. Vice President Christopher. Here. President Boncori. Here. Uh, there being a quorum, I will now call the meeting to order. Could you please all uh, rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? And you have it ready for us, Larissa? Do you have the uh, flag up? Councilor Ruggiero, would you unmute and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Sure. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And, and to the republic, republic for which it stands, which it stands yeah. one nation, one nation under, under God, God, indivisible, indivisible with indivisible, liberty and, and justice, justice for, all. for all. Would you all please remain standing for a moment of silence uh, for Michael DiGregorio. Uh, Michael DiGregorio is a longtime resident and was a teacher in the Winter Public Schools for many years uh, who developed Parkinson's disease and passed away this past week. Uh, please give us a moment of silence for Michael DiGregorio. Thank you. Moving on. Uh, today I have a motion to approve the minutes of the March 23rd, 2021 meeting as they were circulated. I'll make motion that motion. To... Motion has been made. By seconded. Council, seconded by Councilor Flockhart. All right. Are there any uh, discussion on the minutes? Are there any omissions? Any additions? Hearing none. All those in favor of seconding the minutes, please signify by saying aye when your name is called. Councilor Ruggiero? Yes. Councilor Flockhart? Yes. Councilor DeMarco? Yes. Councilor Terry? Yes. Councilor Honan? Yes. Councilor Conti? Yes. Councilor Prino? Yes. Vice President Christopher? Yes. President Boncori? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we will now move into general uh, information and recommendations. And the first uh, uh, item on there is a, a hearty congratulations to uh, Winthrop's Jeff Turkle, who was uh, recently elected the state representative from the 19th district, which covers Winthrop and Revere. And uh, I'm very pleased to see that we have continued the tradition of having that representative come from Winthrop. Uh, is Jeff on, by, on the line by any chance? Do you see him, uh, Larissa or Denise? I do not, Larissa. Okay, if not, I, I don't still... see him in the audience. But if he's there, if he wants to raise his hand, I'm happy to move him over. No, I don't think he is. Um, 
Council President, you're muted. Okay. I'm sorry, uh, doing it by phone instead of computer is, is uh, changing. Uh, again, I want to congratulate uh, Jeff Turco. He's being sworn in tomorrow morning. Uh, by tomorrow afternoon, he will officially be our representative. I'm sure we will be calling him in the near future uh, and getting him to give us some grants the same way Bob Dilio did. I'm just uh, assuming it's going to take him about 10 years or 12 years to get up to the, the amount of uh, grants he's going to be allowed to get. Uh, but we, we look forward to working with Jeff Turco. Uh, he's a good man and he cares about Winthrop and he will he will help us, I'm sure. Yeah. Moving on. Uh, I have a citation I would like to read. Is that person on the line? Denise, were you able to get a hold of? Yeah, yes, Jill is here. Yep. Have you, have uh, she's, she's waving. If you want to unmute yourself, go ahead. <laughs> Hi, thanks for having me on, everybody. I'm honored. Jillian, I appreciate congratulations. It. If I didn't have you on, Denise would kill me, and my daughter Lucy would be, and my granddaughter Lucy would be very upset because, you know, She's in your class daily, and she's your, her favorite teacher. So I, I want to congratulate you. And uh, oh my god! This thank you so much. Up. Yeah, thank you. I love having Lucy in class. I couldn't I tell I Denise. I can't tell if he's still talking. He muted himself. Oh, okay. <laughs> We're used to this by now, huh? Am I on here? You're yep. back. You're back. Yeah. Oh, I'm mute again. <laughs> Phone is doing it uh, because it's. I don't have the uh, things down the bottom like I do on the computer. Uh, Jillian, congratulations! And I would like. I couldn't tell if if you won it or if Denise won it because she was holding the trophy more than <laughs> you were. I saw uh, numerous pictures of her and Tammy holding the trophy when you won. Uh, but this citation is Town of Winthrop, Town Council Citation. Be it known to all that the Town of Winthrop and the Winthrop Town Council hereby offers its congratulations to Jillian Dempsey, captain of the Boston Pride Hockey Team, National Women's Hockey League. On behalf of the residents of the Town of Winthrop and sports fans of all ages and gender, it is quite an honor not only to congratulate you and the Boston Pride upon winning their second Isabel Cup championship and you being named the MVP, the only player to be a player on both championships and historically registered 100 points during your career. We offer you nothing but the best in all your future endeavors, given this 26th day of April 2021 at Winthrop, Massachusetts, signed by Philip R. Boncori, Esquire, Town Council President, and Town Council Members Rich Farino, uh, James Letary, Nick Conti, Tracy Honan, Peter Crisop, Stephen Ruggiero, Barbara Flockhart, and Robert Tomaco. Jillian, congratulations, and you're outstanding. You scored in every single game. Yeah, they, yeah no, thank you so much, and uh, the support from the town and the school community has been incredible, and uh, I'm just feeling all of the love and um, all the excitement from everybody. So I can't thank you enough. Well, you, you're making Winthrop famous again. You're, <laughs> you're as famous as Michael Ruzioni for winning that goal. Oh, yeah. Uh, I wish I was close to that. <laughs> he, he's at the bar really high. We think you are. We think you are. You're fantastic. And I just don't know how you handle it, being a full-time teacher at, at the coming school and, and training to be such a great professional athlete. But congratulations. Thank you so much. Congrats. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the next item on the agenda is uh, Abrams Consulting, which is coming with an introduction to the uh, uh, water loss and water rate study that they are doing for the town of Winthrop. We've hired them to... Uh, to help us out and figure out where our water is going. Are they there, Anna? 
Uh, yeah. uh, they're here with us. I would like to just do some brief introductions and sure. then um, I'm going to pull up their presentation and then kick it over to them. So uh, we're pleased to um, share with the community that we brought on board um, some folks who are going to be doing a study for us looking at um, our unaccounted water and the water and sewer fund and also looking at the rates and how the relationship between that unaccounted water um, relates to our rates and to um, essentially put together some risk mitigation strategies for us on the, some, sorry, some loss, <laughs> loss mitigation strategies for us um, and as well as showing us how that would change the rate um, as we're getting ready for the budget for next year. And so um, just one thing for folks to note, uh, we're going to be talking a lot about uh, water loss and just to, to make sure that uh, folks sort of understand what that term means. That doesn't necessarily mean uh, we have water pouring out of one of our uh, a piece of pipe somewhere. It may, it means that there is a difference between what is measured in terms of what's coming in and um, from the MWRA and then what we're billing. And so we want to get to the bottom of what's going on with that with that uh, difference because our number is a lot higher than what sort of the standard number is. Um, and to see if there's something there, in addition to uh, the substantial work that the Public Works Department has done in terms of leak mitigation and all of the investments the town has been making in shoring up its infrastructure. So um, the folks that are going to present right now uh, from the Abrams group, Mark Abrams and Matt Abrams, and Mark gets extra bonus points because he is the former Winthrop president, so um, extra points there. Um, and from environmental partners, Ryan, uh, Ryan Tran, Ryan, I hope I said your last name correctly. So they're going to be working with us over the next two months to, um, sort of in parallel to the budget process um, on this study on, on what we're calling water loss, our unaccounted water, and then how that impacts the rates and some recommendations on rates. So I'm going to share my screen and um, pull up their presentation and kick it over to them. Um, give me one second. Let's see. Can folks see this? Uh, I'm just going to kick up the presentation here. Whoops. We can see it, Anna. You can see it. Oh, you yes. know, oh, hold on one second. Let me, I, I have two monitors. So give me one moment, everybody, while I get it on the correct monitor here. There we go. Okay. Uh, so I'll kick it over to uh, Mark, Matt, and Ryan. Thank you, Anna. Um, Mr. President, through you, my name is Mark Abrahams, uh, president of the Abrahams Group. We have partnered with environmental partners to conduct the rate study and the water loss audit for the town of Winthrop. Uh, we have prepared a very brief and concise PowerPoint. Uh, we'll walk you through this briefly. Anna will run the slides as we go through this. Uh, Anna, next slide, please. So I'm here with my son, Matt Abrahams. And with us tonight is Ryan Trahan from Environmental Partners. Next slide. So the town asks for two main components, um, the rate analysis and development, and the bullet points here are very straightforward. Uh, the first three deal with the water audit, the water loss, uh, to assess the water loss in the town and the impact the water loss has on your water and sewer rate. Uh, number two, calculate the fiscal 22 rate based on water loss mitigation determination. So we are currently in fiscal year 21, and this will be for the year that begins this coming July 1. And con con conduct a comparison analysis with current rate project projection to determine the user impact relative to the water loss. Uh, to recommend financial policies and programs basically the best practices for your water sewer enterprise fund. Uh, so that, that's part of this. The rate study looks at what is the revenue you're going to need to balance your budget and have some reserves for your fiscal 22 fiscal year for the water and sewer fund. Uh, when we do a rate analysis, we like to look out several years so the multi-year cash flow analysis is also part of your scope of services and recommending reserve balances. What balance and retained earnings should there be for your water and sewer fund? 
and to provide the town with an Excel rate model uh, and train the staff on the same. So that's the first part of this. Next slide. The second part is the management and deliverables for the project. Um, we're gonna be reporting to you monthly to the town with regular conference calls and interim updates to the town council or other stakeholders uh, as appropriate. Our final report will be a letter with recommendations on both the rate study and the water loss and water mitigation. And our final deliverable will be a PowerPoint presentation to town staff and during a council public hearing uh, that we will provide for the town. So that basically covers the scope that you had asked for. Next slide, please. Uh, we're approaching this in four phases. Uh, phase one is to plan, plan both the water audit and the water and sewer rate study. Uh, phases two and three will be conducted in parallel. Uh, phase two, the water sewer rate study, phase three, the water audit. And even though the separate phases, there are overlaps uh, between the two. The water aud audit might reveal additional billings of consumption, which would impact the sewer rate study, water and sewer rate study. At the same time, there may be recommendations for additional capital spending to mitigate the water loss. And that too then has an expenditure impact and revenue requirement impact on phase two. And the last phase will be reporting. Next slide, please. So we've covered a lot with respect to phase one uh, in terms of planning for both the water and sewer rate study and the water uh, loss audit. Uh, next slide, please. So I'm gonna ask my son, Matt, to walk you through briefly this, the tasks involved with phase two, the water and sewer rate study. Matt, unmute, please. I am unmuted. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Uh, yeah, we can hear you. Thank you. All right. Good evening. Oh, yeah. Hello, Matt Abrahams from the Abrahams Group. Good evening, everyone. Uh, quickly walking through this slide having to do with the water and sewer rate study. Task 2.1, confirm study objectives. This task involves discussing the, the scope, work plan, timing, and milestones with town staff, setting up timing of regular updates with town council and other stakeholders, establishing a working group for the development of the rate study and integration with the town's budget process, and to discuss policy issues focused on rate setting and billing. For task 2.2, we're going to review the capital improvement program with town staff and understand the timing of funding items and projects identified in that plan and how the town plans to fund those items and projects, whether it be via borrowing, via retained earnings, or some other way. If via borrowing, we will project debt out for future years. These steps will allow us to project expenditures for all items and projects in the capital plan. Task 2.3, pro project water and sewer costs. We will work with town staff on expected FY22 costs, including salaries, expenses, capital costs, and indirect costs. Presumably some, possibly all of these costs will come from the water sewer budget. We will work with town staff to identify all, any other costs that should be included. Task 2.4, develop non-meter revenue requirements. So we will focus on what we expect to come in for non-meter revenue like fees for new connections and permits for FY22. Task 2.5, develop consumption estimates and review billing system. We plan to review billings for all accounts. We will look at a year's worth of consumption and billing data by account to confirm that the billing system is calculating bills correctly. The file we create allows us to set up a tier structure in that file and understand the impact of different tier structures to users' bills and enterprise fund revenues. Also, we will work with town staff to get comfortable with consumption trends for the town and estimate consumption based on those trends and other information. Task 2.6, develop a five-year analysis. We will extend our analysis of FY22 cost and non-meter revenues to a five-year look from FY22 to FY26. Task 2.7, update water and sewer rates. Based on our analysis, we will propose updated water and sewer rates under the current rate structure and under a recommended new rate structure with ascending blocks. 
Task 2.8, reject revenue and conduct impact analysis. Projected revenue based on the proposed new rates will be determined and the impact on certain users' bills will be determined. We like to focus on the average residential user and any other users that town officials feel are important to look at. And we can go to the next slide now and hand it over to Ryan. Good evening, council members. Thank you very much for having me. And just want to give you a quick background. Environmental Partners is, is uh, headquartered right in Quincy, fairly close, and uh, have about 20 years experience working with all towns and municipalities throughout Massachusetts doing this type of work specifically, uh, among other things. And uh, we're partnering up with Abraham's group to provide a complete water audit, which would be done in accordance with American Water Works Association uh, manual on water loss control. And they provide a, a software program that allows us to track and, and implement and provide a dashboard and rating system on the type of water balance exactly which Anna described at the start of this presentation. Water that's coming in and being purchased on number A and where does it go from there? Is it being completely metered? Is it being billed? And we try to identify where those losses are and, and quantify them for you. Uh, we'll also be looking at the existing customer meters, both for large, uh, larger commercial and residential to see what their ages are, uh, look at some some past meter testing to see um, the accuracy and making sure that they're not currently under registering. Uh, we'll also be looking uh, at the any source water meter calibration records from the MWRA and trying to quantify if they're following the calibration process correctly uh, and look at all the billing, uh, past billing. Uh, we'll look at some sources of unmetered consumption, which can happen with hydrant flushing uh any other hydrant usage or fire protection training or or firefighting um and I, as you know director kala has has worked a lot with uh some past leak detection programs we'll be looking at those as well and trying to actually map those and try to see if there's any correlation between uh problem sections of uh, water mains throughout town uh, or if we can identify uh, anything uh, from the, the past records um we'll be providing that map uh to the town uh, to show them where, where everything is and located. Uh, we'll also look at the anaconda for water calculation um, that has been reported in, in annual statistic reports as well. And then as, as uh, Mark mentioned previously, we'll be involved in uh, sharing preliminary results and conclusions and then recommendations of the audit in, in uh, meetings and in our final report. And a next slide, please. The last phase is to prepare the draft report, review the draft report with the town and finalize the report. And as I said earlier, to make presentations uh, to the town council relative to our findings and recommendations on the water and sewer rates, as well as the water loss mitigation. Uh, with that, turn it back to you for questions if you have any. Uh, I want to thank you, Mr. Abrams and Matt and Ryan for a, a, a great report. Our town's been looking forward to a, a study and an audit of our water system for quite some time. Uh, and I'm, I'm glad you're on board. Does anyone on the council have any questions? None? If there's no questions, I want to thank you for being with us today. And uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to assist you. Thank you. Thank you. Look forward to your report. Okay, moving on. Uh, I will now open a public hearing. We're scheduled for two public hearings today. Uh, Denise, before I do that, uh, would you please send me a link to my calendar because it was not in my calendar and the, my computer's up. I'd like to get off this phone. Draw right now. Okay, thank you. Uh, the first public hearing is a motion to transfer $19,211 for a Harbor Master engine replacement. Uh, Councilor Terry, uh, you want to take the lead on this? Yeah, the Finance Committee met um, a week and a half ago on this matter. We recommend positive action on it. Um, this is going to come back to the town in forms of a grant for 75% of it. So the net cost to the town will end up being $4,803. It's a much needed piece of equipment and we do recommend positive action on it. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone that has any questions from the council? Where well, this is a public hearing. 
Is there anyone from the public would like to be heard on this issue? There is no hands up. Okay. Hearing none, I will uh, close this public hearing and move this issue over to old business. The next uh, public hearing is a motion to transfer $50,000 from the Capital Stabilization Fund for the Ingleside Park Playground repairs. Uh, Jim, are you taking the lead on this or is Anna? I have it. This is also from... Um... You know, this is from the unfortunate accident we had, or uh, the fire we had back um, a few months back at the Ingleside Park uh, playground, at the um, older playground, I guess it would be called. And um, after going, we were fortunate enough to get some insurance reimbursement from this. Um, we had, you know, a few different policies that helped us in this endeavor. We've also been fortunate to have Sean Driscoll. Um, go out and get bids on this. We do feel the $50,000 contribution from the town uh, will be pretty close to um, complete, giving us the ability to complete this project. We have a couple of small concerns and just in regards to disposal of the existing um, bed, I guess of it, you would call it. Um, we hope to have this project complete as soon as the weather cooperates. We have to have a a daily temperature, a 24 hour period of 50 degrees or higher for a good 10 to 14 days before we can um, set the new, the new bed in place. So um, that is what we are waiting for. We hope to have this done later in the spring. And I think, um, I'm not sure if Sean is on the call or not, but I think Sean uh, finalized some stuff today in terms of cost. Not sure if Anna has anything more on this. We do recommend positive action on this. Um, my only question I would have for Anna on this, and oh, we could talk about it later, this is, um, was wondering if there might be the ability to take this from free cash rather than um, capital, considering how much money we've been taking from capital. Um, happy, happy to answer the question now, Councillor, if that's best. Um, sure. I, I, would rec I would recommend, um, in light of the fact that the town has been um, basically operating on a very thin margin for the current fiscal year to close out the books. Um, I would suggest that um, taking from capital stabilization would be the most prudent um, action to take in case uh, revenues um, do not materialize as projected in the final uh, couple of months of the fiscal year and that we would potentially need um, the small sort of balance we have remaining in free cash right now to help us close out the fiscal year. Uh, so I think the capital stabilization fund, understanding that the town has needed to draw on some reserves recently, um, but for the, func uh, the function of the stabilization fund, I think is appropriate for this type of um, unexpected incident. And I, guess, and I guess it will refer back to stabilization in, in, in the case that we don't use the money anyway. So thank you for that. But we do recommend positive action on this. Great. Thank you very much. Are there any questions from any councillors? Hearing none, are there any questions from the public? I can't tell if we have any public. <laughs> uh, we have Karen Chavez. Hi, Karen. Hi. Um, I wonder if somebody could give me the total for replacing that uh, the uh, the total for the work at the playground at Ingleside. Uh, I believe, and Anna could double check me on this, but I believe it's going to be around a hundred and twenty odd thousand dollars. Uh, yes, that's correct. It's around one hundred twenty-two thousand dollars, and so the town received approximately seventy-two thousand dollars in um, insurance uh, funding to offset the cost. The fifty thousand dollars is representative of the town's deductible for the property loss. So the fifty thousand is not a contribution; it's a deductible. <laughs> Am yes. I right? Okay. And the people that were involved in this are they not being held for any restitution at all? It's my understanding that the insurance company uh, would be subrogating a, against anybody that was found uh, responsible in attempting to get money back, as well as if it does go to a criminal court, uh, there may be some restitution. Maybe Chief, you may want to answer. But... Sure. So, um, you know, we know insurance proceedings has, have begun uh, on the civil end of this. Um, this case was referred by the district attorney's office uh, under the recommendation of the police department to communities for restorative justice. 
Um, that's a process that we have engaged in um, with juveniles for the past couple of years. We were the first Suffolk County Police Department to start Communities for Restorative Justice, which is a community-based restorative justice program. Um, again, these um, individuals are juveniles. Uh, everything that is said in the um, restorative circle stays in the restorative circle and cannot be used against them in civil, criminal, or administrative proceedings. Uh, since they are juveniles, their names are not allowed to be discussed um, by statute as well. Um, so I can tell you the process has begun with C4RJ. Um, people have participated. I have uh, participated in this circle myself, and we've had community representatives to represent the community um, and how they were impacted by this. Um, so as far as this process goes, um, it's a three to four month process. Uh, they would have to complete all the conditions set by um, the C4RJ circle um, coordinators and facilitators. If they did not um, at that time achieve satisfactory results, um, they would refer the case back to police department for criminal action in the juvenile court. So I guess my answer to my question that is no, that there's no restitution going to be received from the families of the juveniles that um, did this. So the town now pays fifty thousand dollars. Well, I think I think I just think Karen, that's an incorrect statement. I think at this point in time, uh, the processes are ongoing both with C4IJ and with the insurance company. So at this time, we don't have an answer to that question. So there is still a possibility then that we could receive some of that fifty thousand dollars back. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Is there any other conversation? Anybody else in the public want to be heard? It's so nice to be on the computer again instead of that phone that kept slipping. Quite yet. So there's I no can, other. There are no can, other hands up. I can finally see you all. Okay, <laughs> it's wonderful. All right, let's move on. Then that uh, I will close the public hearing on the motion to transfer fifty thousand dollars, and we will take that up under old business. Uh, we are now open to public comment. Uh, the phone number again is 1-301-715-8592 with an ID number of 844-586-5964-1 pound. Uh, it is now open for public comment. Hopefully we have some hands up. I don't see any right now. No, I don't see any. Do you have any? No. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. There's one. I saw one yeah. now. Uh, Jack. Yep. Hello. Hi, Jack. Good evening. Um, this uh, comment concerns the planning board meetings. It takes two minutes for me to read this, although it may seem longer. At the last of four recent meetings of the planning board, it was determined to put parcel two described on their map as 141 Pauline Street. This land is at the corner of Pauline and Waldemar Ave. They decided to put this land in the Senate Business District. It was a sudden determination, as it was talked about at three previous meetings to make this land residential A. If the council goes along with this proposal, this neighborhood site will then have the same type of development as that is being built at the bottom of Somerset Ave. The building at the corner of Pauline and Waldemar can be built directly on the edge of the sidewalk on Pauline Street and Waldemar. The height of the building can be 48 feet as established in the town ordinances. And the development can be built without providing parking spaces on that site. According to the planning board, no less than 25% of the first floor shall be used for business purposes. It was suggested at the last planning board meeting by planning board member Christopher Boyce that it would be a good location for a grocery store. 
Since parcel one, described as 151 Pauline Street, is dedicated parkland to be used as playground and open space in perpetuity, it seems that the corner of Pauline and Waldemar is not a good location for a grocery store. Please do not let the planning board think they can sell Ingleside Park. Stop this type of thinking immediately. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jack. We will be meeting with the planning board on I believe the 22nd of April in a joint meeting to determine where we're going with the planning and the zoning for that area. Uh, anyone else in public comment? Are there any other hands up? I don't see any other hands up. No? Nope. Okay, moving on. I will close public comment and we'll go into correspondence. Was there any correspondence, Denise? No, I did not receive any. Okay, anyone else have any correspondence they'd like to report? Hearing none, we'll go into committee reports. Finance committee, please. Finance committee met twice since our last meeting. At the first meeting, we had uh, several items on the agenda. Um, in terms of motions, we had the discussion on approving the five-year contract with capital waste. Uh, the committee spoke about it in, in, in a lot of depth and went over a lot of issues, concerns, thoughts. Ultimately, the committee um, sent it back two to one with positive recommendation. We also had discussion on a transfer of $15,000 for pest control. Um, again, discussion on this really surrounded the fact that this is basically an unfunded liability that we've had you know, due to the constraints of the budget over the past several years. Um, this is something that we would like to see. Um, you know, we put some money towards it, but obviously not enough, something that we'd like to see addressed in the 2022 budget. Um, but we've obviously had issues in the town uh, in areas where we normally might not see activity. And again, probably related to COVID and the amount of people that are home and the amount of trash that's being accumulated. Um, we do have positive unanimous recommendation on this to move forward. There was also a motion for $19,211 for the Harvard Master Engine replacement, which we discussed previous, earlier this evening in the public hearing. Uh, we did also recommend positive recommendation on this, and this is um, accounts for the total cost, but will be reimbursed through a grant of 75%. So the final cost of to the town will be a little over $4,800. Uh, the last item motion that we discussed was the transfer of $50,000 from capital stabilization for Ingleside Park, which we <clears throat> obviously just discussed that also, and do have positive recommendation on that as well. The other item on the agenda, which is the same item that was on the agenda in our second finance meeting, which was held earlier this evening, was concerning the uh, situation with dealing with the um, deficit due to the potential new trash contract for fiscal 22, which would amount to roughly you know, a little less than $600,000 ish. For, um, we have made recommendation in our previous council meeting, which we discussed on um, giving the town manager and the CFO the direction that we would be uh, creating an enterprise fund, a uh, solid trash waste enterprise fund. And our thoughts around that would be that the town would make an appropriation of roughly 1.265 million and the remainder of the contract would be made up through a trash fee. Uh, we have had ongoing discussions on the fees and still have lots of questions. The rough uh, numbers we have right now is we would probably be in the coming weeks uh, coming back to the council with some sort of fee paid on a quarterly or semi-annually basis of roughly $40 a quarter. Um, this would supplement the appropriation from the town uh, this would also take care of, and we're looking into the cost of the administration cost and education cost um, of such a program, how it would build, uh, the cost of the build it, billing. Um, so we're still in um, 
we, we, we thank the town manager and the CFO for giving us um, answers to many questions. We still have, you know, we still find more questions that we want to just do this in a as transparent a manner as possible. And we think we will be able to, to, to handle that. There's also been talk um, about continuing to look into as the year progresses and as we move into um, fiscal 23, we still look into the possibility of looking into a pay as you throw system. Um, and that's something that I think is going to be one of the tasks of the solid waste, the zero waste committee to give us more clarification and education on that. But we will also continue to look at that as a secondary option. But right now it looks like for the for the new year starting on July 1st, we will have a trash enterprise fund, which will be supplemented by the town uh, with an appropriation from the town and supplemented by a user fee from the users of the service. So if somebody does not have a, a use for the service, if you live in a condominium or an apartment complex, you would not be a user and therefore would not be imposed a fee. And so that was most of the discussion that we had at our last two finance meetings. Well, we, we will be having another finance meeting next Tuesday night. We would like to schedule it at six o'clock. Uh, and I asked uh, Denise to schedule that. Again, the only item on the agenda would be a, um, I'm looking at new business now. There probably will be a, an item for $5,487 for unpaid bills. And there will also be the main topic would be continuation talk of the um, new trash enterprise fund and any proposed fees involved. Thank you. That's for next Thank Tuesday? You. Yes, please. Thank you. Okay, and council, we will be voting on all of those items except the trash fee in whole business. Correct. Will we be voting on the trash fee before the budget is ready? Uh, we hope to. The town manager, I, I think, feels pretty confident in, in the direction we're heading. And I think um, I'm expecting his proposed budget will uh, take all that we've been discussing into consideration, but we will have something finalized well before the start of the fiscal year. Okay. Thank you, Council Terry. Uh, moving on, the next uh, committee is Rules and Ordinance. Vice President Christopher. Yeah, so uh, the Committee on Rules and Ordinances met earlier tonight to take up the 25% discount uh, for fiscal year 2022 licenses for restaurant owners. Um, we made the, some changes to the motion that was made at the last meeting um, to reflect some of the town manager's concerns, and um, we voted positively to recommend its passage. Okay. Any questions? Hearing none, we'll move that into old business. I think it's the second, third item in old business. Uh, next report is from appointments, commissions, and committees, and that is Council DeMarco. Yeah, that is a long one, isn't it? Um, yes, it is. <laughs> so um, we uh, are tasked with reviewing the town employees um, every year per the charter. Um, and we finished our review um, on March 26th um, to go through some of the evaluations real quickly. Um, you know, um, so first we uh, evaluated the town auditor, um, Dick Hingston, and we were rating everybody on a scale of one to five. It was the same process that we did last year. Um, although we also reached out to the counselors um, who are not on the committee to also provide some input if they wanted to on the employees, and some of them did. Um, as far as Dick Hingston is concerned, as the town auditor, um, you know, everybody on this committee was fairly new last year, um, so we didn't have a, an opportunity to review him the way we should have last year. This year, um, as far as his goals are concerned, he met them all. So we ended up giving him a rating of five out of five. And uh, that was a three to nothing unanimous vote by the committee. Okay. Uh, moving Did you on, also include that each of these um, people that work for us gave you a self-evaluation? They I did, think. yeah, correct. They all, they all got a self-evaluation. They were able to send us a self-evaluation and also help uh, dictate what their goals would be. Um, moving on to the town clerk, uh, Carla. 
um, we had to give her a rating of incomplete um, just because of um, situ a situation just, you know, that couldn't be prevented. Um, she didn't get to uh, work as much as she would have liked. So we gave her a, a rating of incomplete. And I think we can leave that at that for now. Um, as far as the town council clerk is concerned, Denise, you're on the hot seat here. Um, <laughs> we, uh, we actually found that you also met all your goals. And uh, we also gave you a five out of five. Um, and that also uh, came out of committee at a three to nothing vote. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, town manager Faison, um, we, um, hold on. So um, we found that you met, um, I think you had eight goals on there and we found that you met six of them. Um, so this, uh, we, as a committee, we gave you a rating of four out of five. Uh, that came out of committee at a two to one vote. So uh, that's where we're at. Um, the, uh, everybody on the town council should now have a copy of all four of these evaluations. Okay, I think uh, we should have a motion to approve the recommendations of the appointments, uh, commissions and, and uh, committees report. Uh, council president, uh, with respect, I most of the people on the town council just got this very recently. Maybe they'd like some time to look it over and we could vote at the next council meeting if you're okay with that. Uh, I'm okay. It was supposed to be completed in March and that's and I know you completed it in March. So I, I thought we'd be able to to vote on that if unless anybody has an objection. I'd rather vote on it tonight. Uh, do you have an objection yourself as to voting on it tonight? Me personally, no, but I thought I, I, I'm not sure about the other councils. Does anyone have an objection from putting this on and voting on it under new business? Um, I do have an objection. I just received this, I think, at um, I'm not sure, sometime late this afternoon after four o'clock, I think, and haven't had a chance to look at it and wanted to look at how everything was calculated. So I would like to put it off. Okay, that's your, your prerogative. As a council, you can put up anything when it comes up for the first time. So this will be voted on in our next meeting. All right, moving on uh, to the town manager's report. Austin? Hi. Um, so one quick update from my office is that uh, today we got news of uh, a new shared streets grant that the town got. Um, from the Department of Transportation. So uh, we're excited about that. Um, the application that my office had filled out was concerning bus shelters um, using the report that the Transportation Advisory Committee had put together a couple of years ago. Um, presented that to them as our preferred locations. Uh, they gave us um, for proposed locations that they're looking to put some uh, bus shelters that uh, we're going to have uh, Rachel in the planning department work with uh, directly with MassDOT on that um, and then uh, have uh, Director Calla weigh in on it as well. Um, it's going to be on town sidewalks and things like that. But um, mostly mo concerned about uh, the ADA requirements of the bus shelters. But again, it's um, money from the state to pay for um, good things in Winthrop to help kind of bolster the multimodal transportation network in town. So uh, I, I just want to thank the Transportation Advisory Committee. I know they're not uh, acting right now, but uh, they came together, provided this report to the council in my office, and uh, happy to say that at some point over this year, we will have some bus shelters in town, uh, which is uh, not a first, but uh, we I think we only have one. So it will be uh, four more on top of the one that we have, which will, you know, it gives people the wait uh, an area away for the bus. Um, other than that, um, I would pass it to uh, Director Hurley to give uh, an update concerning COVID. Thank you. Hi, Meredith. Hi, everybody. Did Notice I didn't jump on you today and, and give out all the statistics. That you <laughs> <laughs> That's a, that's okay. I think people are getting used to the, the routine at this point. Um, so just a few quick updates regarding case counts and vaccine efforts. And um, 
and things like that. Sorry, my mouse is not working. So as of today, we've had 2,155 confirmed cases with 35 deceased. Um, as much as the 35 is 35 too many, I'm happy to report that we haven't had any additional um, any additional deaths in the last um, in the last few weeks. Um, I think greater than three months at this point. So we have 48 people currently isolated and 2,072 have recovered. Um, this is where our case count kind of sits is um, we've, I know that some people that have been paying attention to this have been noticing that our case counts were increasing over the last um, like 10 days. So we definitely, we saw an increase of our incidence rate. We're up at 24.7 currently, um, percent positive also bumped up a bit to 2.79, although we still remain as a yellow designated community. Um, today, we only had two new cases, which I'm happy to report. So. Um, if we link together a couple more of those days, we'll see those on our isolated list continue to fall. Um, here's where we sit with our vaccine rollout efforts. Um, I have to say Winter residents have been able to access vaccine pretty, pretty well from these, from these numbers. Um, as of last Thursday, when the state reported our numbers, we've had 38.5% of our population receive their first dose of a vaccine. Um, that means 7,282 folks um, have received at least their first dose of um, a vaccine. And so what have we been doing? So this is just the same, um, the same slide that I've been showing, but these are all of the efforts that we've done and where those sources have come from. So this past weekend, we did second doses. We did 220 second doses on Saturday. Um, we did 20 additional homebound second doses yesterday, and tomorrow we'll be doing 70 additional second doses. Um, and then we have about 40 to 50 additional um, second doses to finish up. We don't expect right now um, local supply. The, uh, the Commonwealth is saying that as eligibility goes to the general population beginning later on this month, their priority will be having people go to the mass vaccination sites. There's also a plan in the works to do a regional site with, I think, I believe seven other communities in um, where it could make access a little bit easier for Winthrop residents. But um, again, this regional effort still has not been able to get vaccine supply either. Um, so here are the local sites. My, my big, um, my recommendation to people is right now to um, to go ahead and register, no matter what your eligibility is. Um, I recently was able to have even registered my 16 year old and my 18 year old on the site um, so that they can wait for their vaccine appointments. It was really easy to do. These are also the other local sites that are not necessarily using vaccine signup.mass.org.gov. Sorry. Um, again, East Boston has been a phenomenal force here locally. They have a site in Revere at the Wonderland Ballroom, one in Chelsea, one in East Boston, and another one in the South End. And they're taking appointments over the phone as well. And that is their phone number. And I believe, um, and if anybody needs some help, you know, if there's any questions about vaccine or how to sign up online to the mass vaccination sites, um, please feel free to call the Emergency Operations Center at 617-539-5837. And that's it. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, Meredith. Um, I would ask uh, Director Calla if he could unmute himself briefly. Um, I didn't ask them this beforehand, but uh, the Center Business District project is starting to ramp up again. Um, and just to give a quick update to the community on that. Sure. Good evening, everybody. Uh, so uh, contract of uh, uh, PGO so is, is back uh, actively working. Um, they've started, uh, they resumed their work at the intersection of Jefferson and Putnam Street doing some drainage and sewer upgrades. They'll continue up Jefferson uh, to uh, approximately midway to complete the uh, sewer work there. They have some drainage work in the direction of Putnam Place and um, 
that should take the next couple of weeks to accomplish. And then they'll move back over to the cottage park and Somerset area to finish the drainage over there. Uh, at that point, um, all utility work will be done and the electrical conduits and, and street and sidewalk work will come uh, They've uh, reestablished their staging areas in the uh, ring parking lots front and back. And they're also occupying some space in the citizens parking lot while they're working in the vicinity of, of Putnam Street to basically minimize <clears throat> the uh, back and forth uh, to mitigate how much of an impact of traffic on Pauline Street. I'm happy to take any questions. Councilor Terry. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Steve, for your lead on this. Um, can you explain to me again, and just everybody out there, there seems to be some sort of sidewalk work done from another contractor. Uh, which seems to be somewhat redundant. Um, I, I know on Woodside, I've noticed it. And can you just explain how and why this is happening? Absolutely. So what you're seeing is uh, it was actually a mix up on, on the, with National Grid and their subcontractor. National Grid, as you recall, did a, uh, we brought National Grid into the Southern Business District prior to our project to do all the gas main replacements which they did. And um, we brought them in um, in front of what their planned schedule was to do the work there. So the agreement was that and would, they would just put the sidewalk panels back in asphalt, which was perfectly fine with us because we were going to be restoring those sidewalks as part of the project anyways, which we still are doing. Uh, their contractor came into town and, and they were supposed to just concentrate on the Bartlett Road, uh, Bartlett Parkway, or Orlando, which was uh, a, a secondary project that National Grid did. Their contractor was, you know, started to restore the panels in the center business. That has been stopped. It was at no expense to the town. That was paid for entirely by National Grid, um, but it, it appears as a waste of taxpayers' money. It's not the Winthrop taxpayers that are, that are funding that, but that has stopped. Uh, they should just be restoring any trip hazards and you won't see them in the, in the business district uh, again, that contractor. Thanks, Steve. Any other questions? Is that the uh, town manager's report or do you have more? Um, that's all I have, thank you. Okay, thank you, Austin. Uh, any questions for Austin at all on any part of it? Uh, Councilor DeMarco. Yes, uh, Austin, I don't know if this is question is for you, Anna, it might be for you. Um, my understanding is that we had $156 million allocated to Suffolk County in COVID relief. I'm sure like 100 million of it's going to go to Boston. Is there any idea of how much of that money we're going to get, when we're going to get it, and what we can use it for? Uh, sure. Uh, I guess I should have given a little bit of this during my manager's report, and I apologize for that. Um, in dedicated money just to Winthrop um, in the America Rescue Plan Act, uh, there was $1.83 million. Um, there was additional money to Suffolk County and what that is being what's being done with that because there isn't essentially a county anymore is that it's being uh, separated by uh, divided by on a per capita basis. Um, so we, uh, in combination with the 1.83 get a total um, allocation directly of a little over 5.4 million or right around 5.4 million. That said, uh, we will get that in two, what are called tranches, so two uh, allocations, one sometime, hopefully sooner than later, and then another uh, at some point during calendar 22. Uh, we're going to be able to utilize that money um, through the end of calendar 24, um, so that would be into fiscal year 25. Um, that said, um, we still, <laughs> I was just reading uh, Assistant Town Manager CFO Friedman's memo concerning the budget today, um, where she uh, talks about this a lot. Um, this is not necessarily um, 
like a found money situation. This is uh, how do we plug the gaps and uh, of what happened over the last year and how do we build some sustainability into these public health programs type of thing. Um, so that's what we're getting for town side stuff. Um, there should be some school related money as well, which is, um, I don't have the exact number on what that is, um, but I believe that the intention from the state was to have that fall through similar formulas to chapter 70. So we can, uh, that tends to work out uh, in sometimes positive, but sometimes negative ways for Winthrop, unfortunately. Um, there are other large amounts of money that we are going to be able to utilize locally. We may not have, it may not be coming into our coffer so you all would vote to accept the federal grant, um, but there is, um, I believe it's $10 billion to the Boston Region Transportation Network. So most of that goes to the MBTA, but uh, from my perspective as uh, the town being part of uh, us operating a ferry uh, and water-based transportation suffering significant cuts during uh, the past year with the MBTA, um, I would like to have a conversation and I'm going to have one with the mayor of Quincy and the acting secretary of transportation for the state concerning um, if Winthrop is entitled to some of that money because of our transportation. Um, is that something that could be set up to subsidize our ferry type of thing? Um, so there's that amount of money. There are health specific related money type of thing. The money that's coming to us is seems like the intent is to make up for lost revenue uh, and to try to mitigate the impacts of the last year um, to some standards. We're still, we are, I, I've been on three calls with uh, Sean Cronin, who works in the Department of Revenue, uh, Division of Local Services uh, with the state about this. They still don't know. And this, so the state still isn't giving us discretion on it. Um, you may hear people talk about, um, there's a, there's a lot of stuff in there. So there's a lot of um, sorting out what it is and what we can do with it. But the bigger numbers around the 5.4 um, over a time period until the end of uh, calendar 24 gives us an opportunity to do a fair amount of good things with it. Um, so yeah, that, that's something exciting, um, but we're <laughs> It's exciting to a point until we have the rules of how we can spend it and the 20 different ways they're going to reject the ways that we try to spend it. But I look forward to testing the rules and figuring out how to spend it. Thank you, Austin. Councilor Terry. Thank you. <clears throat> Just a couple of quick things. We talked about um, in-person meetings, I think you said maybe May 1st. Is that what you were saying? Oh, is it? Okay. So I was actually just checking on that today, uh, yesterday and today, um, we have a fiber optic cable that needed to be run from our, our IT server room to the Harvey room concerning us and our transition from Zoom to go to meeting, um, which is going to happen. And what that is, is it's a specific camera to have these web-based meetings, but then also have them happen with the public because the real problem is, is that if I let three of you in there right now with your laptops, you're going to get the echo thing. You're not going to be able to talk correctly. Like it, I'm trying to work through how to make it work correctly. And right now, unfortunately, we can't do Zoom and use the cameras for WCA TV in there at the same time. So we have to figure out that part of it as well. But May 1st is still what I'm looking for. Um, if I can get it for the fall for or the spring form, excuse me, in two weeks, um, just so a couple people could be in there. Um, we're, we're working at that. And, you know, we've talked a lot about the, um, obviously, town hall and, and the library, and I don't want to go back over that now, but I was thinking, you know, the biggest part of our population that's been affected, I think, the most with this is our seniors, because they've really been homebound for a long period of time because of thoughts of just not wanting to go out. The good thing is that we've done an incredible job throughout the town and with the state in regards of getting the seniors vaccinated. So I think there's a pretty high percentage of our seniors that are fully vaccinated. Is there a chance or possibility that we might be able to 
you know, we haven't even talked about the senior center because that was kind okay. of like, you know, the last thing you want to talk about because it's such a vulnerable population. But now that population seems to be in, in good shape in a lot of regards because of the vaccination. So hoping that we could get them, give them something to have to do or to, you know, is there any talks about that? that we can um, have some sort of hope for that. Sure, so um, Kathy has been, she's been working hard the whole year. So it's- Kathy's it's, incredible. It's, yeah, working. it's, uh, she never stopped working. Um, the site itself though, so she has uh, kind of cleaned out the side area uh, yeah. where there used to be a couple trees and there are pavers. Uh, she had one of the parklets that we got from the Shared Streets program installed out there with some heaters and things like that. So there is a little place where people can congregate outside and people have been doing little things out there. Um, but I do think that as these numbers can try, continue to uh, rise in terms of vaccinations and, um, you know, uh, one thing I was just commenting to this to Anna is that our high vaccination numbers deal with our demographics in town. Uh, we do have an older population. Um, so I do think it's something that would be worthwhile to um, have Kathy think through um, with Meredith, what's safe to have in those spaces and what we can do in terms of if people are congregating, how can we keep them safe? Because there's still gonna be we still want to work within the public health rules um, as much as possible. So um, I will, um, I th Kathy generally gives updates at the, um, at the forums that I do, but I will have Kathy Dixon um, give me an update on that and we'll work with her um, over the next couple of weeks. So there's something included in the spring forum concerning the senior center. Thank you. Any other questions for Councilor Jero? Thank you, Council President. Um, just a question um, regarding sort of like the the current protocol for um, using public space. Are we still at the point where, um, you know, rooms need to be sanitized after use, in between uses, in between groups of people? Um, is plexiglass still required in certain areas? Um, if you could just speak to that a little bit. In terms of our workspace? In terms of workspace, in terms of sure. in-person meetings, yeah. Things like that, and what the cost would be associated with, uh, you know, if there, if we still are at that point, what the cost would be associated with sort of prepping a room for our next group of people to meet. Sure. So the the Harvey room itself is a little bit easier because it's a site that we use uh, daily. Um, the Harvey room is going to be where we have uh, the public have appointments and work with uh, staff from town on um, a, an appointment basis. Um, Starting excuse me, starting on May 1st. Um, so we have the assets in place to keep those places clean. Um, our custodians are all trained on kind of like these more disinfectant um, type of cleaning um, situations. Um, we're still gonna, we're gonna ask people to wear masks. We will have masks available for them, all of those types of things. Um, so then the shift into the in-person meetings um, is a little bit of the um, one, if you're gonna have a mixed group, um, say some counselors are in the room and some counselors at home, that's the issue that I'm trying to work through right now to make it so it's actually a professional feasible meeting that we don't have 20 minutes of technical problems in the beginning and then have to postpone a meeting. Um, the Harvey room is a small room, so, we may be dealing with space constraints on that, depending on how things go in the future. Um, but KP law and the state have both kind of weighed in on, um, and this is where Winthrop falls into a weird point, uh, because we're a town, there are town related uh, like observations and best practices. We could have a town meeting, there's, advice about that of how to have a large scale town meeting now, which there wasn't last year, but weekly meetings are not something that have a fair amount of determinations have been made about. The once a year town meeting has been opined upon a lot. So I'm still trying to work through the best way to do it. Ultimately it's the, we want you all to be able to have meetings in there um, in a way that we can continue this um, the way that people can interact with the meeting from home as well. Um, I think that's the 
real like civic engagement part of it that's opened up during this process. So that's my like core item that I want to make sure that we don't have drop off as we come back because um, I think you guys will continue to have kind of like the diverse set of public comments and things like that and more engagement with some of the committee meetings and things like that if you have that available. So um, it, it's a uh, that cable got installed. Um, it's actually the police department was working on it a little bit as well. And I think we're getting pretty close to, we'll shift over to go to meeting, which is essentially the same as Zoom for anyone who's at home watching, uh, just a, another company doing the same thing. Um, and I believe that, that with, with that camera solution and with a technology solution, we'll be able to have, confidently have meetings for however many people were legally to allowed to have in that room. Um, to keep them safe and the cleaning costs that were uh, earlier in the process of COVID before we had um, our disinfecting sprayers and things like that. We have all of that stuff now. So we can, it's a, a lower um, cost to clean up after these things um, now. So um, we'll keep this spaces clean and safe to the best of our abilities. Got it, thank you. Thank you, Austin. Um, any other questions for Austin? I would just assume keep us Zoom as long as possible because I think we get better participation via the Zoom meetings than we've ever had in the past during a council meeting. Uh, we could always have at least 20 or more people coming on uh, as participants and asking questions and, and watching us closely by Zoom. I think we get that going back and forth. If uh, the school committee, which you know, have to be on as well. Uh, has been meeting for the past three meetings, partially in person. Uh, the first meeting, they had three people in person, four on Zoom. The last meeting, there were four people in person and three on Zoom. Uh, it, it seems awkward to me because it seems like the four people that are in one room together and are barely six feet apart uh, when they have one microphone for the entire group of the four of them, you don't really uh, get a clear uh, voice uh, audio coming through from that room, whereas uh, the ones that are on Zoom are Claire, Isabel, and yeah, and that's to come in a Claire. That's what we're trying to figure here. out. Is it's a camera that actually moves based off of who's speaking. Um, we can most likely tie the audio in from the microphones in the room. Yeah, but they're going to um, have to be individual microphones because that doesn't work with the Yeah, well, you I, you all invested in the tables and um, the microphones and stuff like that. Um, and we use some technology money for the cameras. So um, uh, for the WCA TV cameras. So we do, we should be able to set it up correctly once we have that data connection and uh, the correct camera installed. Um, but I... Uh, I don't want to make a pro I hope we can have that in place for the first meeting in May. I don't want to make a promise on dates because I keep punting every single date involved with COVID related things. So um, I don't want to set a timeline that isn't feasible, but I do think it's something we can pull together in the next month. Okay. Thank you very much, Austin. Uh, no more questions for Austin. We will move on to the school uh, committee report. Uh, the school department had a meeting last night uh, and it was the first day of school. Every single uh, student uh, that wanted to be back in school was back in school yesterday. And it was a very successful day. Uh, school opened, it went well. Uh, the kids were very uh, fantastic and very flexible according to the teachers and, the, and administrators. Uh, they thought everything worked out as best as it possibly could. Uh, there was a little bit of problem with lunch, but that worked out. It went well. They don't have the tent set up yet, but they're working on getting them to set up. There was some uh, problem with uh, dig safe uh, permits with the tent, so they are not getting the tents up until next week. But it worked, and uh, everybody was in school, and all the kids were happy to be back in school. I know all of my grandchildren went back or ecstatic about being back and seeing all their friends and seeing their teachers every day rather than just two days. So it was, it's pretty good. Uh, the the Binex testing is, uh, is all set for the school uh, and they sent out permission slips to the parents and uh, that's a test where they can test for uh, COVID in the kids uh, and get results within 10 minutes. 
And if someone is testing positive, they have uh, special quarantine rooms to put the kids in until uh, they get, you know, uh, another test or until their parents come to, to pick them up. So they're being very safe. The uh, school department also approved their preliminary budget, which will be coming to the council uh, in the next week. But um, their budget looking for next year is $23,469,695, which is an increase of $1,228,945. Uh, the great majority of that increase is, is just due to steps and lanes and uh, increases in salary. But other than that, the budget is pretty tight. I have, uh, we will be receiving it as a, as a council uh, in the next day. But um, if anybody has specific questions, I, I could answer them. But we we'll all will be getting your own uh, spreadsheets probably within the next day. Okay. And that's what I have for school department report. And it was just so good to see the kids back. And I'm glad we uh, passed that vote to let them go back on the fifth. All right. Any questions? Hearing none, we'll move on. Uh, next thing we have is old business. And the first motion under old business is for the town council to approve the town manager to sign a five year contract with capital waste. Uh, which committee looked at that? The high finance? You're muted, Jim. Yes, finance did look at that. Um, we voted two to one to with positive recommendation, but I believe our recommendation was based on the fact everything we've heard, our, this contract started July 1st of 2020, not July 1st of 2021. So this makes it look like a six year contract to me. So we did move forward with a positive recommendation based on the contract starting July 1st, 2020. Okay, a motion has been made by the Finance Committee to approve the town manager signing a five-year contract with capital waste. And since it came from committee, it does not need a second. Is there any discussion on this motion? Councilor Terry. Yes, yeah, so I, I want to first confirm that since we're paying almost 520000 more this year because of this contract, can we agree that this contract should be dated July 1st, 2020 and ending June 30th, 2025. Can I get in from that? Uh, yes, I, I had that contract updated. Um, I sent it over to uh, Councillor Honan before this meeting, I believe. Um, but I've tried to distribute the corrected dates on multiple occasions. I think we just have a uh, version uh, issue the, uh, with the PDF, but um, we do have um, the same contract with the dates of uh, June or July 1st, 2020 to July 30th, uh, 2025. Okay. Um, and, and again, I was the one dissenting vote on that from the finance committee. I just think that this was Something that we, we knew were coming, we, we had no idea of the magnitude of it. Um, we do thank Capital Waste for many years of, of giving us, by all accounts, a very good deal. Um, I, I just wish, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. I just wish this had come to us a lot sooner and we had acted on this a lot earlier. Um, I can't in good conscience back this contract. Um, I think there were just too many questions with it in regards to the amount of money it's costing us. but. Um, the committee did come back with a two to one recommendation to approve it. Thank you, Councilor Terry. Councilor Farino. Uh, this is uh, through you to Austin. Austin, uh, we discussed possibly putting uh, uh, four unit buildings in the, uh, you know, in the mix as far as collection. Uh, would that affect this contract at all? Um, I th just to answer that quickly, for I, I think what we discussed is to make sure everyone that has been getting their trash picked up over the last 13 years with capital 
would continue to get their trash picked up. Um, I think there's been, you know, some talk about it because there's been a lot of conversions over the last 13 years from condos to uh, from apartments to condos and such. So I, I think what we had discussed was to try, and I think Austin was going to try to get an answer to try to assume that or uh, confirm that everyone that has been getting picked up would continue to be picked up. And we would look at the composition of that. And we will have to go through the, an ordinance review. I, I think Vice President Christopher will be getting involved in this just because if there's a fee involved and such. But we're going to have to go through some ordinance reviews. But I think the, the major goal is to make sure everyone that has had the opportunity to have their trash picked up by capital would continue to do so. But I go back to the town manager for any further explanation. Um, I would uh, have to confirm that. Um, I do, I go ahead, Anna. Sorry. Uh, uh, just one suggestion um, uh, on the, the question on the contract. I think the, the, the ordinance is currently written as um, I think one between one and three family. So I think the contract language is reflective of what the ordinance language is. Um, I would um, I would recommend um, that the the contract is written right now because it's just reflective of the ordinance. If that were to be approved, and then if the council were to adjust that ordinance, and I think you could, I think you could just amend that portion of that. You could do a quick contract amendment, I think, for that portion of that if that were to change. And so I think it's because of whatever the whatever the ordinance is, the contract needs to be um, commensurate with that with that language. And so I think that's what the Austin. I think that's what the the contract right now. Um, so I, whether or not capital is picking up extra. I, I, I don't know that, but I, so I think you might need to just, I don't think that you could, I don't know that you could sign, I don't know if you could change the contract language if the ordinance hasn't been changed yet. There's, I think the point I just wanted to make sure was put out there. Okay, thank you. Any other questions on motion with Terry? Well, I do, I do think it's important then if, if, and I agree with what Anna just said that the contract does, is going by what the ordinance says um, but if capital has been picking up in their proposal, I'm sure is based on what they've been picking up. Um, I, I, I can't imagine voting on a contract that we don't know definitively who is getting their trash picked up for. I just think that that's, that would be deplorable to vote on something that we don't actually a hundred percent know who is getting their trash picked up. Council Christopher, unmute yourself. Has capital waste uh, raised this as an issue um, that there are people who are getting their trash picked up currently that might not under this contract, or is this something that we're just we're just saying right now could potentially be an issue in the future? Capital has not raised that as an issue with me. Um, I think this has been, um, there have been discussions concerning three and four unit buildings uh, receiving this benefit. Um, we've talked about four unit buildings kind of throughout this process. Um, by ordinance, they shouldn't be being picked up. Um, we know that they, uh, Steve knows that, excuse me, Director Kala knows that Capital does have a list of some four unit buildings that they do not pick up from, um, but we also do not have uh, a list of addresses that they do pick up from. So we think there may be a little confusion on the address list that they're, they basically are picking up all the trash that's out there, um, not necessarily picking by address where they're picking up or not picking up. Um, so that is something else we'd clarify with the solid waste program. But um, at, in this situation, um, we were talking about, it. we've been talking about four units for um, a while. Um, I had introduced earlier tonight that um, since the ordinance needs to get updated um, and since we had been talking about four units a fair amount of the time, um, this could be the opportunity to update that ordinance to include the four unit buildings in it um, so that they were covered by this ordinance if they were receiving the benefit. Um, Again, though, um, some of this information, as I've been stating in the finance committee meetings, um, is not information that we have on hand, and it's not information that capital has on hand. Um, this is a contract that we've had in place since 2003. Um, and again, this is, this is an extension of a contract that was in place before. So we're trying to implement new forms of, solid, of a solid waste program 
um, on top of a legacy contract. So um, there is, I, I will completely agree that there are things that need to be cleaned up about this. Um, but I also um, have tried to request the, um, the five-year um, contract renewal. Um, I, can, I can do the three under my own authority. Um, I think the five is a more beneficial option because it allows you all to amortize um, the cost of the barrels over the five-year contract rather than a three-year contract. Um, so I, I stated this, and I just want to be clear with everyone, um, I stated this during the um, finance meeting about this, but um, I under the town manager's position, I do have the authority to approve a three-year contract. And in this situation, um, I would be willing to approve a three-year contract if the town council were to vote um, against a five-year contract. I think that it is imperative that solid waste is covered in town. Um, I think that this is, uh, unfortunately, we got uh, caught up with some payment terms that we had been benefiting from for a period of time. And um, we have an unfortunate situation that we need to pay a larger bill. Um, so there's a lot of things rolling out with the solid waste program. Um, but in this case, um, it, yeah, it, it's, it's been tricky. I, I unfortunately don't have all of the answers for all of the questions presented by this. Um, okay. I think you're, you're okay, uh, council, uh, uh, town manager Faison. Uh, I think it's pretty clear that the contract says one to three family residents that goes along with what our bylaws say. Any changes that are done in that can be done administratively. And I don't think it would take a council vote unless we're changing the bylaw. But if there's any uh, changes where there's a people that are put on the trash that shouldn't, there's, there's a process of getting them violations as well and getting them to go out and get their own uh, trash pickup either from, you know, capital waste or from easy disposal or, or pizza rubbish. So I don't think that's an issue. I think the major issue is getting it passed and do the savings because we're doing five mm -hmm. years instead of three years. So I, there's no other questions. I'd like to take this vote. Okay. Hearing none, all those in favor of giving a uh, town manager phase on the authority to sign a five-year contract indicate by saying aye when your name is called. Councilor Ruggiero. Yes. Councilor Farcat. Yes. Councilor DeMarco. No. Councilor Terry. No. Councilor Honan. Yes. Councilor Farino? No. Vice President Christopher? Yes. President Boncori? Yes. Motion passes. Motion carries. Next uh, item on the agenda is uh, the proposed trash fee, and it's my understanding we're going to put that off and just carry it on the agenda uh, for the next couple of meetings. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Uh, next one is motion to direct the town manager to provide a 25% discount on licensing fees for physical year 22. Council Christopher, would you like to speak to that? Yeah, so like I said in our report, the Rules and Ordinances Committee met earlier this evening and uh, came up with and recommended the following motion. Uh, motion to direct the town manager to provide a 25% discount to licensees and their respective licenses for FY 2022 to businesses who received a common victuala license for calendar year 2020 and were forced to halt operations due to the COVID-19 emergency public health orders from the governor or the Winter Board of Health upon request from the licensee to the town manager's office or the town manager's designee. Okay, that came out of the committee with a positive recommendation. It doesn't yeah. need a second. Is there any discussion on it? Hearing Council Terry. Yes, uh, do we know how many businesses this involves and how much money it involves? And if it involves money, it should be referred to finance. I, I think that finance already heard this um, twice <laughs> previously, and what I thought that that was addressed in the finance meeting. Was it not? I believe this came out of finance uh, a meeting ago with an unfavorable recommendation. 
So we had a finance committee with an unfavorable recommendation and it was sent uh, now to rules and ordinance with coming back with a favorable recommendation. So I think both committees have looked at the situation. So I think if there's questions, we should just put them on the floor and vote on them. Any questions? Council Farino. Uh, this is uh, through you to uh, Austin. Uh, you expressed that we're getting quite a bit of money uh, from the CARES uh, rescue or whatever. And uh, would this be something that could be reimbursed to the town if we did uh, give them this break? Uh, I would, I, I've spoken with Councillor Christopher about this. I think that uh, the most useful way to pursue uh, this type of program would be um, a like small business restaurant um, type of program that we would um, utilize um, American Rescue Plan money. Um, we can't necessarily, we need to figure out how to get it that we are making like an in-kind uh, movement of money from uh, one to the other. We can, we can't necessarily reduce the revenue for the revenue number. It would be some type of like grant program type of thing. So um, we can take this direction and go with it and try to figure out uh, how to get a program implemented for uh, like a July one type of thing. Um, if this is the direction. Um, but again, like I said before, just to uh, just to kind of continue this narrative, uh, I'm still getting additional directions about the America Rescue Plan money. So as much as I say something is a good worthwhile idea, um, I may be told by a lawyer that I'm wrong um, in the near future. So um, I think we could, and that is the way that I would like to uh, utilize this program. I think that would be the path of least resistance. Okay. Anyone else want to be heard on the issue? If if not, Council Christopher. Yeah, I just want to again just say I think that it's important that we recognize that it, there were businesses who received licenses and paid for them in the town who didn't receive the benefit of it uh, during that year. Um, you know, this isn't about trying to save people's businesses or replicate what the federal government is was trying to do by keeping businesses afloat. This is a very narrow issue. It's really just about saying to people that we understand that you paid for something that you didn't receive the benefit of. Um, you know, we talked, I understand that the budget is very tight. Um, I, I think it's important to note that we're talking about next year's budget, not this year's budget. Um, but the fact of the matter is, is that we're making value decisions about what we wanna put money toward just about every meeting we're going to do it in the next three questions on this agenda i plan on voting positively for them because i believe that those items are you know in line with my values for the town and my vision for the town and likewise i think that this is something that is also in in line with the direction i want to see the town going and it's important that we recognize that businesses just were not able to reap the benefits of things that they paid for and it also sends a statement that we, uh, you know, that we recognize that and we have the back when we can. And so I ask that people vote, um, vote affirmatively for this. Any other discussion? Uh, council, uh, um, Assistant CFO, uh, or CFO, Assistant Town Manager. Yeah. Thank you, Council President. Um, uh, thank you for recognizing me. I just wanted to make sure um, just to provide uh, some additional context um, for the motion um, and maybe just help some of the uh, discussion on this for your deliberation. So um, right now the FY22 budget is in balance based on what I was looking forward to um, presenting preliminarily for the finance committee on Thursday and then for the council uh, sort of those final numbers on uh, the 20th. Um, this, uh, to the extent that this uh, doesn't necessarily add up to a ton of money as a, as a a nominal amount or a percentage of the overall budget. Uh, we've closed well over a million dollar budget deficit for going into FY22. And uh, we have some very challenging um, decisions and cuts that have been made in the budget that we're gonna be putting forward uh, shortly. So um, if this is voted, I will have to go back and cut another at least $10,000 out of the budget or probably take that from the town's rainy day fund to cover it um, just because we've really 
um, really are kind of down to cutting into bone right now. One thing, um, I don't know if we would be allowed to use, we are allowed to use American Rescue Plan funds, um, as far as we know, uh, to offset revenue loss due to COVID for, um, for uh, city and town budgets. We have no specific guidelines yet about what that means, what's the benchmark for that. So we've made an assumption around something like that in the manager's budget that we're going to be presenting. Um, that could change. Um, it could change in the positive, it could change in a negative way for us. I don't know if we could assume using those funds to offset the revenue loss for the um, for a smaller licensing fee, but I would have to adjust the licensing revenue down and then commensurately reduce our expenditures. Um, and, and so we'd have to make a judgment call on that. I do think that, um, as Town Manager Faison said, we're gonna have over $5 million in American Rescue Plan funds um, I know other communities have done small business relief programs that have been, um, I think maybe even would provide a more generous potential opportunity um, to potentially help achieve a similar end. Um, and this isn't necessarily not intended to sort of argue against uh, the vice president's motion in any way. It's just to kind of add some context for what uh, we're looking at in terms of making the budget pieces fit on our end. Um, and so I, it's just it's just an FYI, you know, FYI, I don't know that I can use the ARP money to offset in the town budget, if we take down, if we unilaterally take down a revenue, um, but I think that we could probably use the ARP money to create a program to inject some sort of grant uh, funding um, out to the, to the businesses that wasn't that isn't directly tied to the actual like licensing provision itself. Okay, is there any other discussion? Terry, Council Terry. Real quick, I, I just, I, I honestly commend Vice, Pre Vice President Christopher for his thoughts on this. Um, I think it's admirable. I think it's, you know, it's, it's, you can't argue with what he wants to do. Um, I just, and again, we're, <laughs> we're spending 15 minutes on it, you know, a $10,000 item on a, on a $60 million uh, budget. But I just want to say that there, you know, there are many things that a lot of us, uh, you know, pay taxes for library and senior center and a lot of benefits that none of us were able to attend. Um, I would wholeheartedly support the vice president and and with the help of the town manager and CFO to to possibly use um, some of this, you know, money that we've been so fortunate to have to get from from, you know, the federal government and the state government to to try to have some sort of benefit. Um, but we could nitpick uh, many items throughout the town that we could go back and ask for lost revenues for um, in town departments as well as private enterprises. But, um, you know, again, as the finance chair, I just, as hard as it is, I just can't support the motion, um, you know, with, with a budget that's just being balanced now and to try to, to look at another lost revenues. But I, I, again, I commend the vice president for his thought and his sincerity and his, um, you know, just good wishes for the businesses. And, and, and it's greatly appreciated. I just, you know, I, I can't support <laughs> okay, it. Thank you, Council Terry. I think it's more than best wishes. I think he's looking for equity. <laughs> but uh, if we can do a, a rental relief program, I don't know why we can't do a small business relief program uh, with that money as it comes in. But anyway, uh, I shouldn't be speaking on it, Council or Chair. I was going to put it to a vote, but go ahead. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, just real quick. I mean, this isn't a novel concept. Plenty of other cities and towns have done this. I think Revere just, uh, you know, gave out three hundred thousand dollars to the business and restaurant community um, not too long ago. So, um, you know, we're not talking anything with nearly close to that to that volume or magnitude. Um, I voted for this in committee. And I plan to vote for it again right now, but um, I, I think this is the right thing to do. And I think it's important to just let the businesses know that we have their back and we're listening to them. Um, this request came from um, a local restaurant owner too. This isn't. This is a direct request from this community. So, um, you know, I don't want that to fall on deaf ears. Thank you. Okay. All those in favor of the motion to uh, offset. 25% uh, of the licensing fee for certain businesses, please signify by saying yes when your name is called. Councilor Ruggiero. Yes. 
Council Flockhart? Yes. Council DeMarco? Yes. Councilor Terry? No. Councilor Honan? Yes. Councilor Conte? Yes. Councilor Farino? No. Vice President Christopher? Yes. President Boncori? Yes. Motion carries. Uh, next motion on the uh, agenda is a motion to transfer $15,000 for pest control. You want to take that, Councilor Terry? Yeah, a motion coming out of committee that the town council vote to appropriate $15,000 from free cash to replenish the inspectional service purchase service account due to extraordinary pest control expenses as estimated for the remainder of fiscal year 21 or take any other action relative there too. Since this motion is coming on committee, it doesn't need a second. Is there any discussion on the motion for $15,000 for pest control? If not, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye when your name is called. Councilor Ruggiero? Yes. Council Flockhart? Yes. Councilor DeMarco? Yes. Council Terry? Yes. Council Honan? Yes. Council Conti? You clear? Councilor Conti? Councilor Farino? No. Vice President Christopher? Yes. President Boncori? Yes. <clears throat> motion carries. Next motion is a motion uh, to transfer $19,211 for a Harbor Master engine replacement. Uh, Councilor Terry, is that coming from you? Yes, it is. Uh, and it's a motion to transfer $19,211 from the Harbor Retained Earnings account for the purchase um, of a new outboard engine for the pump out boat or take any other action relative there too. Is there any discussion on this motion? It needs no second coming out of committee. Councilor Honan. So just a note, um, and Councilor Terry, can you confirm that all but about 4,000 of this will be reimbursed? Yeah, this is coming from, I think it's called a CVV grant or something like that, which is gonna cover 75% of it. I think the bottom line to the town is roughly $4,800. Okay. Or to, not to the town, but to the retained earnings line of the Harbor Mass. Of the Harbor Mass. Okay, is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of this motion uh, for the $19,211 for the engine, signify by saying aye when your name is called. Councilor Ruggiero? Yes. Councilor Flockhart? Yes. Councilor DeMarco? Yes. Councilor Terry? Yes. Councilor Honan? Yes. Councilor Conte? Yes. Councilor Farino? Yes. Vice President Christopher? Yes. President Boncori? Yes. Motion carries. The next Dr. motion President. is a motion to transfer $50,000 from capital stabilization for Ingleside Park playground uh, repairs. Councilor Terry, I believe this came out of your committee. It did. We removed that the town council vote to transfer 50000 from capital stabilization fund to general fund special article 01960588-588193, fiscal year 21 Ingleside Park playground repairs or take any other action relative there too. This came out of committee with positive recommendation. Thank you. Any discussion on the motion? It needs no second coming out of committee. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of spending 50, transferring $50,000 uh, to the Ingleside Park, playground repairs signify by saying aye when your name is called. Councilor Ruggiero? Yes. Councilor Flockhart? Yes. Councilor DeMarco? Yes. Councilor Terry? Yes. Councilor Honan? Yes. Councilor Conti? Yes. Councilor Farino? Yes. Vice President Christopher? Yes. President Boncori? Yes, motion carries. Uh, we will now move on to new business and uh, new business. There is a, a new motion that came out and that motion is that the town council author, uh, vote to authorize unpaid bills of a prior year to be paid from current year departmental budgets as noted below. And I believe it's uh, from Parks and Rec. Uh, 
finance and building maintenance? Did this come out of finance? No, it's going to be sent to finance right okay. now. All right. I have a motion to send motion this to, to finance. Up. Yeah, exactly. I believe the total amount of this bill is uh, $5,487, and it's for uh, Neshoba Valley Ski Area, Massachusetts Municipal Association, and uh, Motion Elevator Corporation for uh, our test. So that those will be going to the Finance Committee and be reported next um, meeting under all business. Seeing no other new business, does anyone else uh, have any motions or want to bring up anything under new business? Any councilors? Hearing none, we'll go right into public comment. And uh, again, the public comment number, oh, I see we have two hands up, but the public comment number is 1-301-715-8592 with an ID number of 844-586-596-416. Uh, pound, and I see, um, yeah. I think it's Kathleen, Shannon, and Kurt. Oh, we have somebody oh. signed in as a user. Hi, this is Who's Kathleen. On? Hi, Kathleen. Um, I just have to address the debacle, which has been this capital waste contract. Um, I am horrified. We have two attorneys on this council that just voted to approve the signing of a contract, which only covers one to three units, when it was stated by our town manager that there are certain four unit residences that have been getting picked up. So what you just did by allowing this is now the, the four unit residences do not have to get picked up. Just because an old contract was wrong and this is nearly and is an extension I just, it's, the negligence is just beyond gross. Um, I just can't believe it. So now, let's say capital waste does not go to those residences where the taxpayers have, to their knowledge, been putting out their trash legally, and it, get, and it gets picked up. So now what's going to happen is if those, those people, which I hope they do, come together and say, wait a minute, how, how is how is this equitable? You know, Mr. Christopher was talking about equity with the businesses. How about equity with your resident taxpayers? The fact is this contract covers one to three units. It covers capital waste providing the receptacles for one to three units. The cost of the yearly line item is for covering one to three units. It's grossly, grossly negligent on, on the part of the council. And I just had to let you know how horrified I am, especially at the two attorneys on the council. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. But our bylaw says one to three units will be picked up. And if that's a bylaw, the contract fits the bylaw, or the unit should not be being picked up until someone decides to change the bylaw. Yeah. Uh, next. Uh, next up. We have Kurt Millar. Kurt. Are you there? Yep, just had to unmute. I uh, just wanted to give a reminder that tomorrow night, there, uh, what Thursday night, there will be a uh, public hearing for, from the ordinance review. Um, it, it is posted on the town website and hopefully we can get some good feedback from uh, the citizens of the town. Um, okay. I planned on mentioning that under uh, public relations, but go ahead. Hey, sorry about that. <laughs> That's all right. Go ahead, Kurt. Bring it up. Uh, I'm actually trying to pull it up. Uh, we did send some information over to the call-in center. Uh, there was a call made with them so that we could uh, kind of get some, hopefully they'll have it ready for us on Thursday uh, with eight bullet points that we sent over to them uh, by a motion to uh, the chair. Um, and they said they will work on get some information so that we can share it with the public. Um, and also looking for the feedback from them. And it'll be uh, hosted by, on Zoom. So uh, people, if you have feedback also, they can also uh, send it by email to us also. So that was a lot also. Okay. Thank you for uh, chairing that last meeting of the Ordinance Review Committee. And that meeting, uh, which is there for public hearing, 
will be on the 8th at 6 p.m. And I'm sure you're going to put out the, uh, the, the webinar information. Is that correct, Kurt? If you'd like to come back in, you can raise your hand here. Yes, you would. Sorry okay. about that. I muted myself and uh, disappeared. Yes. That's all right. Uh, Kurt, do yes, you have right. webinar information? It, it's actually on Zoom. So if you go to the town hall, it's uh, there's a posting up on town hall for the Zoom meeting. I'm trying to open it right now. But it's, yes, so April 8th, 6 p.m. Uh, the webinar is on Zoom. It's all posted with the passcode and everything. So it should be all set if people go to the town website and click on that, they'll be able to get to it. Thank you, Kurt. Um, Is there anyone on public comment? I think I see Shannon. Yes, let me just move Shannon over. Okay, Shannon, you can unmute yourself. Hi, everyone. Hi, um, Shannon. Hi. Um, first off, just want to thank the um, town administrators, elected officials, and our especially our town health director um, for the time that they've worked um, and volunteered really during this past year, during such unprecedented times. Um, we've all had to carry on and de deal with day-to-day -day life um, during this pandemic, despite, you know, the emotions that everyone um, has had to deal with. Um, I, you know, that said, I, I do hope we can keep the body. Um, I think it's, you know, I think it's incredibly important not only to celebrate the victories um, and, and to take these victory laps, um, but also to really reflect and humbly look back at what went wrong during the year as well. Um, these were obviously very challenging times, and I and I don't, you know, I know I don't think anybody would would say that they weren't. There was certainly no playbook um, for that, but I, I do think it's a real test to our town and to our leaders, um, to really lead and and to to be able to. Um, uh, forge a path that maybe no one has led for us, but that, that we have to do for ourselves. Um, so I, I really don't think that looking past is futile. I think that we have to look past in order to be able to be better in the future. And so I do hope that, you know, we don't just, you know, let this past year and this pandemic um, go behind us. I think we take this opportunity to set a higher bar for ourselves in the future. Um, and I'd ask the town council to not only look upon themselves, um, look upon our town administrators and look upon our school um, to make sure that we do plan a, a better future and be better prepared. Thank you. Thank you, Shannon. Terry, did you want to say something? Yes, just um, just I would just like piggyback on Shannon's comments, and then I have uh, two announcements um, important to the police department. So um, I know Meredith Hurley has been tracking uh, things that have gone wrong. Uh, as well as my department. So um, there's certainly a list being collected. Uh, and, you know, when we do get to the end of this, um, to go back and review what we did right, what we did wrong, and what happened um, that caused us to go into emergency mode, and how do we fix that for the future. Um, so that is um, an ongoing process. Um, Meredith has been pretty much leading that um, process. And at the end, uh, police fire, um, health will sit and go through that process with the town manager and the assistant town manager. Um, and so we can, you know, our lessons are, are learned and how we can do better in the future. Um, so that's something I, we agree um, that needs to be done and should be done. And just uh, if I could switch month of April's autism awareness month, the police department is selling patches and also we'll have t-shirts, I think by the end of the week, that people can purchase for $10 at the police station. We're teaming up with the Doug Flutie Foundation. All proceeds will go to the Doug Flutie Foundation. Next Saturday night, uh, the 16th, is it? Or the 17th? Um, forgive me for not having that date on my on my uh, <laughs> laptop here. Um, at the rink, there'll be a fundraiser, um, all-star um, tournament between... Um, 
police officers and some all stars around Winthrop. Um, people can watch it on WCAT. There'll be limited um, seating available at the rink two hours before. There'll be a table out front that people can go through, drive through, and purchase a patch or a T-shirt and all those um, monies that are raised at the rink that night. Or anyone who wants to come to the police station and donate money is more than welcome to uh, do that. All that proceeds will go to the Doug Flutie Foundation um, for Autism Awareness. Thank you. Thank you. I was going to mention that as well on the public relations. Are you selling blue lights as well? <laughs> we we are not. <laughs> uh, hopefully people will get their blue lights and get them out for the rest of the month because uh, it is a, a blue light event to have uh, autism awareness. For autism awareness. Okay, anyone else on the public comment? Let me, let me hit any everybody else in the audience first, Richie. Anyone else in the audience? No hands up in the public. All right, then I will close public comment and I will, uh, Council Farino. I just wanted to uh, let everybody know in Precinct 1, we're having a, a precinct meeting tomorrow night, uh, 7 o'clock. Just uh, go to the town website and click on the uh, calendar and uh, you'll be able to get in the Zoom meeting. Okay, very good. Anyone else have any uh, public comments? Where am I hand up? <laughs> okay. All right. Anyone else? If not, uh, I just want to point out that we are having uh, a budget proposal at 6 p.m. in the spring forum at uh, 7 p.m. on April 20th. So there's two meetings. The fiscal 22 budget proposal first at 6 p.m. and then uh, a short meeting there after and then we will have a spring forum at 7 p.m. That is April 20th. There will be a joint public hearing with the planning board on the middle school zoning on the um, Wednesday night, I believe 422, uh, two nights after our, our meeting on the 20th, which is a Tuesday. So this will be Thursday, April 22nd at 7 p.m. That's a joint meeting to uh, begin the approval of the next step for the zoning of the uh, middle school area. All right, there are openings for the Airport Hazards Committee. There's an opening on the Board of Appeals and the Planning Board and TSAC. So anyone interested, please go online, fill out an application uh, and get it in to Denise and uh, we'll see if we can get you on some committee. I know there were some people that wanted to be on uh, the diversity committee, but I had chose an Asian uh, young lady to be on that committee last month. But if you still want to get involved in the town, there are other committees besides the diversity committee. So if you would like to truly get involved, fill out an application for one of these other committees and we'd love to have you involved. If I are hearing any other business, anyone else have any comments? Any other public relations? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion. Motion by Council Farino, seconded by Second. Second. By Council Ruggiero. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. When your name is Yes. Council Flockhart. Yes. Council DeMarco? Yes. Council Terry. Yes. Council Honan? Yes. Council Laconte? Yes. Council Farino? Yes. Vice President Christopher? Yes. President Boncori? Yes. Thank you. Thank you all. Please be safe and thank you for a good meeting. Less than two hours, just less. Yeah. <laughs>